So one had an outgoing administration uh, that had no mandate to do much of anything under President Buchanan. President Buchanan spent his time alternately lecturing the South on the fact that, that slavery, I mean, uh, sorry, secession was illegal and saying at the same time, I have no power to do anything about it. What response should be made? There were actually some in the North and some of the stronger anti-slavery elements in the North who said that it might be better just to let these errant states go. If they leave, their departure will free uh, the United States from the taint of slavery. The more numerous conservatives, some of whom sympathized with the South, hoped that a show of forbearance would cause the, the disunion mo movement to collapse. In other words, we shouldn't do anything uh, precipitous, and then uh, this uh, secession movement will collapse. And one can find clergy preaching both sides of that in, in, in the North. And even, and, and then particularly in the Upper South, one finds politicians and clergy saying the same thing. Well, until the Lincoln administration commits some actual act of aggression, we have no grounds to secede from the, from the Union. What changed all of this was the firing on Fort Sumter in April of uh, 1861. Uh, Fort Sumter, as you know, sits astride uh, Charleston <coughs> Harbor. And it presented a peculiar problem both to the Confederate president, Je Jefferson Davis, and uh, to the American president, uh, Abraham Lincoln. If Lincoln gave up this piece of federal property, he seemed to be recognizing secession. On the other hand, uh, if uh, Davis didn't challenge this, would the Confederacy's claim to be independent really be credible in the eyes of the world? Can you really have a foreign power with, with an arsenal sitting in, in the harbor of one of your main cities? And in any event, there were signs that the South Carolinians may well have gone, on, gone off on their own. Uh, so Davis uh, gave orders that the, the uh, surrender of Fort Sumter was to be uh, required. When this did not come, the batteries uh, from shore opened fire. Now, uh, Fort Sumter seems to have totally changed the, the atmosphere in the North. Suddenly, the issue was no longer one of what we ought to do about these states that say they're out of the Union. It was a case of the flag having been fired upon, of direct rebellion against, military rebellion against uh, what the North believed was lawful uh, federal presence. And suddenly there is a total change in Northern uh, uh, opinion. Uh, and this goes through not just Lincoln supporters, but through people who had opposed him in the North in the general uh, election. The Union had to be preserved, it was asserted. And not again just by politicians, <laughs> by, but by clergy. I wish I had a dollar for every sermon of, the, of, of this sort I have read uh, in, in my career. Um, when Lincoln then subsequently called for volunteers to suppress the rebellion, he won nearly universal <laughs> backing. The words of a congregational minister in Northampton, Massachusetts may fairly stand as the motto of countless other uh, Protestant leaders of the, of the day. If the crusaders, he said from his pulpit, seized by a common enthusiasm exclaimed, it is the will of God, it is the will of God, much more may we make this our rallying cry and inscribe it on our banners. Now in the South, of course, Lincoln's pro uh, call for volunteers to put down rebellion is taken as an act of aggression and states that previously had not seceded Virginia being the most notable, decided to go out, again, with a, a considerable clerical support. Now, the people in the North were not all abolitionists at this point by any means. That is to say, they were not fighting a war initially to end slavery. 
They were fighting a war to preserve the Union. And the clergy were uh, prominent among uh, asserting that the Union possessed sacred meaning because the hopes of humankind rested on its preservation. Uh, it, it was believed that the United States stood in the forefront of a biblical civilization whose twin pillars, a pure Protestant Christianity and a Republican democratic institutions, were destined to serve as a model for the renovation of the world. If this elect nation were destroyed, said one minister, crushed and degraded humanity must sink down in despair. William Buell Sprague, an old school Presbyterian minister and editor and uh, um, a man who uh, put together the annals of the American pulpit, often used as a source uh, for 19th century historical research. When William Buell Sprague had to speak about this, he predicted that Northern success in saving the Union would, and I quote, usher in a flood of millennial glory, the great Thanksgiving day of the world. He's saying the same thing Julia Ward Howe was saying about the coming of the Lord. And this becomes all the more remarkable when one reflects on the fact that William Bills Brake had been far from being an abolitionist, far from being uh, radical politically, but the impact uh, of the firing on Fort Sumter rouses this spirit within him. Now, so Southern clergy also viewed their cause as holy. Uh, Fred has already mentioned how uh, some uh, noted ministers, such as uh, 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 Be Benjamin Morgan Palmer, played a, a um, prominent role in the drive for secession. <clears throat> and when the conflict began, the clergy said that this was a classic instance of a just war. But it was more than that. Upon the, the uh, citizens of this new nation rested a special mission. Theirs was the task of setting before the world ideals of ordered liberty, states' rights, and biblical values that the Yankees had perverted. I think you really don't understand what Confederate clergy were up to if you don't take seriously their earnest belief that the northern clergy had turned utterly faithless to, to the gospel. They had turned faithless because they did not believe the plain word of scripture when Paul, for example, says, servants be obedient to your masters. And look at all the kinds of religious heresies that flourished in the north, uh, from Mormonism, uh, to, the, uh, seven, to what became Seventh-day Adventism, to Transcendentalism, and so on. This, is, this becomes a kind of refrain of many of these people. We, we are seeing the outworking of Yankee infidelity, that is, infidelity to biblical principle. And so they see, the Confederates see themselves as fighting, and the clergy with them see themselves as fighting for liberty, but it is a biblically-based liberty which is ordered not the kind of Jacobin uh, liberty that uh, the French Revolution re represented. That, that, that it's interesting that you chose to use that, Fred, because one of the things I, as I've gone back through some of this material recently, that I am seeing more than I hadn't noticed it before, is how often the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror was used by Southern clergy as a negative reference point. This, this is where the Yankees were going to take us. Now, how does slavery get directly involved in the war? As, as Lincoln would say in his sec second inaugural address, um, that Lowell knew that slavery was somehow the cause. But initially, the Union was fighting, as I've said, to save the Union, not to end slavery. If Lincoln had simply tried to free slaves, in 1861, the war effort would have collapsed. He would not have had a consensus uh, sufficiently strong to sustain him. 